Hey, John Thorburn here. This is Keeping the Print Quality High with Canon Image Press and PrismaSync Color Print Server. Let's get started. Part 1, Bringing the Press Up to Color, the Repeatability Story. In this first lesson, we'll take a look at how PrismaSync Image Press can be used to produce consistent, repeatable colors in print. At Settings Editor, log into PrismaSync as key operator with the password In the Media Catalog, you can sort it by family, type, weight, and size. One of the default medias is appropriate for calibration. It's the Tabloid 11 by 17, 105 gram. Let's look at it. In the Edit menu, we see the size, the basis weight, surface type normal, and the media family it's assigned to right now, which is the uncoded family. Now we go to color. Color calibration, calibration media, and media for calibration. We take what's in there and we change it to our stock. For media family calibration, we're going to make a change. All halftones, we switch to halftone normal as basis for fewer sheets to measure. And this is where you turn on G7. G7 support, enable it. Now we can define the G7 media family. Media families, add media family. This one we'll call G7 uncoded for the uncoded stock will run with it. Be sure to put the check in the checkbox next to G7 and choose G7 Uncoded Profile. Now we'll define a new media to use for G7. Media Catalog, Add. We'll use our hammer mill stock. Name will be hammer mill. Size is 1117 tabloid. Basis weight is 28 pound, that's 105 grams. Surface type is normal. Media family, G7 Uncoded and we'll make a comment about the brightness. Custom type name, Bright 100. Now we put the papers in the trays and we assign the trays. So at the press panel, tray one, assign. We can sort the list many ways. Basic mode, we can ask to sort by size and then we'll see that our press calibration paper is right there at the top of the list. For tray 2, this will be our G7 stock. We can go to advanced mode and we can search by typing in HA for hammer mill and hammer mill pops up to the top of the list. Now the stocks are in the trays and the trays are assigned. We can go to system, to color adjustment, to printer calibration. Turn off shading for now and we'll start with auto gradation adjustment. This is a hands-off procedure. The charts will print and measure themselves with the inline measuring instrument. You can use this time to do other tasks, and when the system is done, the Finish button appears. We click it, and now that part's done. Now we go back to do shading correction. It will pick the widest size sheet that's in the press. Shading correction is a cross-track uniformity correction. You measure the printed sheet by hand using the i1 Pro 2. So initialize i1 Pro 2, then take the sheet and start to measure the rows, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And when that's complete, the press is up to color and then you're ready to move on. Let's discuss some of the principles underlying press calibration. First, we have the empty paper. Then we start putting some maximum amount of color onto it. Maximum cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Then we start assigning names to the quantities. There's none at the top. All we can get at the bottom, halfway is somewhere in between. Now the numbers. 
Inside the printing press itself, the number scale is 0 to 256. So all of it is 255, half 127. They can also be normalized to 0, 100, and 50 percent. Then we look closely at the maximum amounts, and those are measured on a logarithmic scale of reflectance, and they are called Dmax. There you see a different set of numbers, like 1.4, 0 0.9, 1.6. Now we realize that 100 percent equals 255 equals 1.4 on the cyan, 0 0.9 on the yellow, 1.6 on the black. Now through the half-toning process, we subdivide that maximum amount into lighter and lighter values. When all four of those maximum amounts are stacked up, they equal 400%, which is too much to print, so we have to reduce it. That's called total area coverage, or TAC. Now let's focus in on the details of that tone reproduction, or the half-toning or lightening up of that maximum amount of colorant. Inside the image press system, that's referred to as gradation adjustment. So let's construct a table and let's start to put some fictitious numbers into the table to see how this sort of a density control system works. We have color patches that we print, we have a target that we hope for, we measure the patches and we make a correction. Let's look at the patches. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. These are the scales that we print when we launch the press calibration. The target is what you hope to measure, and if you don't want any changes in the values, that's called linear, and you can see 10, 20, 30 in white. The actual measurements, you can see that they travel. They sometimes change. 5, 17, 25, 38, 50. So therefore, the correction in green would be add 5, add 3, add 5, add 2, no change, and take away 5. So that's the table of what we wanted, and what we got, and the corrections that you have to produce. That table can be presented graphically, as you see here. So let's construct a graph. These graphs are called input-output curves. They have many different names. We'll look at some of the details. Along the bottom, the input values. Up the side, the output values. Zero is in the lower left, 100% in the corners. When you get a value input that equals the value output, that's called linear response. Input equals output. And when you get that, the curve is actually 45 degrees, not a curve at all. Now let's start to plot the measurements in this example in red. 5, 17, 25. You see the shape is below the desired curve, the desired linear response. Now we start to plot in green the correction values plus 5, plus 3, plus 5, plus 2, 0, minus 5. Now you can see the shape of the correction curve. So tone reproduction gets tracked and controlled in two ways. Tone reproduction tables and tone reproduction curves. The press calibration is a density control system that works along the principles that you see here. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.